since the emergence of television in the 1940s to the expansion of social and news media that travels across America, African Americans and other marginalized groups fall victim to negative stereotypes that are presented in these platforms. As society watches these depictions, racism and discrimination heightens, making it difficult to be a minority in this era. So how exactly can we uncover these depictions that are presented? First, we must identify how African Americans are being depicted in media platforms. So I think the news media has done a lot better of a job um, portraying African Americans in the media, um, but I do think that there's a lot more work to be done. So for instance, there are a lot of single narratives that are presented uh, across different medium forms, and a lot of times you see uh, the stories about crime and violence and the thugs and the gangsters and things that are terrorizing the African-American community, which happens, it does happen, but I think the problem with presenting only that side is that you don't see the whole picture. Oh, well, of course, media plays a huge part because, you know, it's the visual way of telling stories. Um, the media has an ability to shape um, the way people perceive gender, race, um, and all sorts of isms and social issues that we encounter. I think the media uses its influence um, quite negatively, and I also believe that depending on what region or what type of news you're watching, um, or what area this news is being reported from, you get different depictions of, of race. I think that most of the, the negative stereotypes that come out of media um, usually deal with race. When race is covered in media, it becomes a sensitive topic. So how exactly do we receive this medium? Who are the storytellers and presenters in news media specifically? I think they tend to be older white men who are not only racist but also sexist. The first time that I've recognized this sort of decision to use African Americans um, in the positions of interviewers, right? Um, both uh, with talking heads coverage um, and uh, and sort of on the ground. And, um, and I think that that is something that I haven't seen in previous cases. African Americans are an unstoppable race and have endured many forms of oppressions over the last hundreds of years. Dr. Willis Patterson quotes by saying, we are a superhuman race. In recent events in the media, the Trayvon Martin case, as well as the Ferguson and Michael Brown killing, has sparked social movements by African Americans in order to raise awareness of these issues at hand. Though these movements are present now, how helpful are they? Obviously, it's something visual. So uh, if, if protest groups want to get news coverage and they do something visual, like holding their hands up, wearing a hoodie, uh, they're more likely to get the coverage than if it's just just another person talking in the street. I definitely think that these mass campaigns like the Hands Up Don't Shoot as well as the hoodie movement with Trayvon Martin definitely bring a lot of attention. And the good thing is it brings a lot of attention to young people. Um, in years past, I think some of these issues were only seen as like adult things and only adults can make a change. But when you're able to involve young students, especially college students that um, really have a voice, they have a lot of impact on these issues that very much are uh, spreading across the nation. I think that these sorts of campaigns do a very good job of spreading awareness. Mm -hmm. And they also let people know that these things shouldn't be tolerated. And we are very much aware of what's going on in our communities and other communities that are being marginalized. 2013, Don Lemon, a CNN anchor, presented a news segment on African Americans and identified problems within the black community and gave suggestions on how to combat them. He listed five ways that could potentially make a difference. Could Lemon's points really be effective in helping combat some of the problems within the black community? Sort of agree with, um, and others I think might be a little bit conservative um, uh, in the sense that I would think that I think it's important to present yourself well, but I also think that suggesting that you wear that you pull up your pants um, is, you know, um, is not actually acknowledging that, uh, you know, in hip hop culture, that's sort of part of the dress, and and that that's uh, that 
that's a valid form of, you know, <laughs> walking around. Like, why not? You know, as long as you're not actually uh, showing sort of butt crack or what have you. <laughs> Theory, all of these things would solve the problem. In reality, they don't. Um, so pulling up your pants, you know, that's just an element of professionalism. We don't need to see everything. Um, that's down there. I think, you know, stop using derogatory language is a very good one. Respecting where you live. All of these qualities, I think, can be presented, but in not only the black community. I think that's where it becomes a problem, um, saying these things. Um, I also see that there are a lot of institutional and societal issues that don't help these issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that in combination with something else. So following these rules or these suggestions in combination with implementing change on a legislative um, level with pol police brutality and, um, you know, trying to change the educational system. I think all of those things in combination would help to end a lot of the racial problems that we're seeing. But no, I don't think that just by pulling up your pants or, or uh, you know, respecting where you live, I don't think that that solves everything. It solves pieces, but not everything. With news media being a potential cause as to why these stereotypes exist, is there a way that news can change the way it presents these stories about minorities? Is news reporting an effective form of spreading positive representations? It is one way that people get information about the world, <clears throat> but it's not always uh, the best way. Though is that we have to stop blowing up things and then letting them die. And that's what we do. I mean, you think about BBUM um, and that campaign that was associated with that. It was a big deal when it was good news, when it was on the forefront of the news. When the news lets it die, so do we. And I think if, if, if we make more of an effort to let, let the media know that this stuff is still important to us after the, you know, the big rally happens, it's still important, we're going to have more um, coverage on these things. work discussions of race and ethnicity into the classroom, you know, um, uh, and, you know, of course, discuss it in the history of television, um, uh, TV theory, pretty much every class I teach. Um, uh, and I really try for it, you know, for our discussions about the representations of race to be not just one week but sort of woven into the schedule, um, as well as discussions of, you know, uh, all, all different forms of diversity. When approaching this issue, it is not just a professor or higher education job. Much responsibility relies on the journalists and reporters as well. I think that as a former journalist, I can tell you that most journalists that I know try very hard to be fair and tolerant and to benefits society. I mean, the whole purpose of being a journalist is to tell the truth so that society benefits. So the good journalists don't do things that hurt uh, minority groups. I absolutely think that reporters have a lot of power. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, don't read further into issues or they don't do much more research than presented. Um, so I think that obviously you can't get the whole entire story in a minute long package or a 30 second news story, which is unfortunate, but it's just the reality of the situation. But I do think that by having reporters that are educated on matters themselves, so going in, doing their research, it, um, being able to talk to as many sources as possible and um, just going through the steps to really balance the narrative that they're presenting, I think in essence that would stop a lot of the issues at hand. Discussing the issue of race and approaching the topic is a great start. How important is it to spread this new knowledge that we obtain? It's a very important topic. I think it's, it's something that we have to talk about. I think the more you talk about things that are uncomfortable, like race, the more you talk about things that are uncomfortable, the more people get used to hearing them. So typically, when it comes to something like race, or you talk about sexual orientation, or you talk about gender, you know, it's because because people are so afraid of those topics and they shy away from them, we don't get we don't reach a point of saturation. 
So until we get to a point where we're having these conversations um, on a regular basis, comfortable or not, um, it's, it's never going to get any better. So I think the fact that you're bringing this stuff up and bringing it to light and, and, and showing it in a in a different different way, a different view, is it's, it's, it's important, and we need to continuously talk about these things over a period of time in order for it to get better. It's the really best way to go with making good decisions and being educated and not just taking what you hear from someone else as, as the ultimate truth. There are a lot of different truths, so the the great way to go about um, finding your own truth is to do your own research. With the research, education, and actions like these from activists, students as well are making a difference and are changing the ways people consume and watch media. With the ideas presented here, African Americans have the opportunity to combat against these cultural stereotypes by redefining their roles within the community and remaining strong throughout the media's influence on society. There has been progress, but there is still more to be done.